I should text her and tell her oh, that no, it's not done. <laughs> I mean, no, I wasn't. And they've done. They've done more. Than they think they're actually really fixing it now. But there was nothing. Just like there was nothing yeah. up, yeah. and so I was like, "Well, we yeah. yeah. just waiting for you to go." And it was like it was like hot, like sun shining, and it was so like the afternoon. And I was like, "Oh, I'm being real small, baby." Just stay on the beach. <laughs> So there's still at that like where you can go to the road, but you can get to the highway on the same phase. They're still right there to the start going to Geraldine, but they moved it some scant distance to the right 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 to the I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You should be able to because you're going to go to that beach where you can go if you're coming off of that um, gravel or you can go up to Geraldine or you can take the, you know, yeah. right there's that house there. I don't know who lives there anymore. But I'm guessing how the whole thing is. It would drive me down. You can wait 30 minutes. I'm really and then they, they have to wait at all on this. Well, they have to wait so long for the final. That that line hasn't moved, and I don't think they're going to stop that. Um, sorry, I never and it was for the engagement they were Why? 
Uh, Janet requested trustee elections for board chair and vice chair set a policy committee and have Zoom virtual meeting protocols for voting. So policies were already on the agenda. So I put that under um, unfinished business to set the policy committee. Um, and for new business, the Zoom virtual meeting protocols, because that is new, and then trustee elections after that, so full of public comment. Are there, any, are there anything else that anybody wants to? Um, I, this might be kind of new business, but I forgot to announce there's um, comment guidelines. They're on the table, so just everyone's aware. You may now, like, you may comment during an agenda item that occurs between the seconding of a motion and our vote. But everyone's only allowed to comment once today. So if you want to comment on the agenda item, then you can't then comment during public comment also. But there's some guidelines over there. Any other new business or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, let's move to minutes. Um, so as I got to looking through things and on the website, I, I do not believe that there has been approval for it, like actual true approval of by the board for a, the April meeting, the May meeting, the budget meeting, or, the, or last week, eight months, obviously, because that would be today. So um, theoretically, in your binders, you would have those minutes in each month. I would just like to start with the April minutes. And if there are changes that need to be made from the, from the last thing I sent out, I have my pencil ready. I have my all my minutes ready. So the April minutes are in the May tab. April yeah. minutes would be in the May tab. Um, uh, because part of it is getting part of open meeting meeting laws are getting them out in a timely fashion. So we're way way behind on that part. So it would be Wednesday, April 26th. Board of Trustee minutes, Wednesday, April 26th, right? Yeah. Hmm. Approximately three pages. I think there was discussion of doing an attachment instead of the public comment at the start. Yeah, I think that was my only. Due to how that one was recorded, there will not be time stamps at this event um, because it was just uh, unless unless one of you would like to volunteer to sit and listen to it all and do time stamps because now that we're recording on Zoom, it automatically does a transcript. I believe. Hopefully, Mandy, is that turn on? on because Montana law requires time stamps. No, then it's then you can put it in. Like, okay. This action happened at this time stamp. It automatically does it. 
Oh, if it's not turned on for this meeting, we'll arrange that for the next one. This is the first time out um, for us hosting the Zoom meeting. Um, do we still have the transcript? Somewhere. I don't have Somewhere. it with me. Oh, okay. it's upstairs. We can we do that and say that we're learning when we're. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now we're doing timestamps. So then it would out. be. All of number three would be, it would say like C recording. Yeah. And recording. then about four through the rest would be, let's say, right? Minutes, yeah. budget, reports. Yep. Yeah. That's what I would like to see if it's possible. Pretty minimal after the public comment and right through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. There was the only like there were some policies and then we accepted the bid and then they looked like either in the midst of yeah. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Um, okay. Any comments? All in favor say aye. All opposed, same thing. All right, minutes of the eighth of the April 26th meeting. Let me write this. I wrote notes on here, but let me write it down. Okay, so looks like you can start looking at the name. Please, so, May 24th. Okay. This is the one you were just the one you were yeah, I think you were gone for this one. No, I was not the main one. No, but I mean, uh, when we approved it last meeting, I think we had this one approved. Yeah, I thought, well, okay, so there was a mention of some amendments, though, and yes. I did not really understand that from the. I believe Janet um, pointed out that it did not include a time adjourn. So there was a note to add me if you're given a five. We must have had public comment. We had it first. And I think the same thing with yeah. just putting. That one, I can't remember if we have a recording of it. I'm still on the eight point four. So this one, if I remember, was full of comments, so we didn't really have time to do anything. Correct. I mean, it wasn't a lot of. I think that meeting was entirely public comment. Yes. Meetings need to include only what was done in the meeting, not what was said. Um, I know you brought that up before, Janet, but I looked at the past minutes that you drafted, and you do actually include a lot. That means what I'm talking about. My draft, my meetings that were from given from Emily, actually, actually, I just wrote what she had wrote down. Okay, now use those minutes. And since Emily's got here, I turned it back to her. But I really am talking about now. Okay. Minutes I just need to include what was done in the meeting, not over set. Did you want to look at it? Sure. That's all wonderful. Um, I think that's all I see. And this is Robert's rules. Oh. I would feel very strongly that Montana state law is primary to this. And, and I know Montana state Montana law does say law in their things, which I can look up, does say that they use Robert's rules. And actually, our bylaws even say that. Yes, but I still think the Montana state law requirement that you include public comment in your minutes would overrule mm -hmm. Robert's rules. 
I don't think you and I are going to come to an agreement on this. We are not going to come to okay. an agreement on this. Okay. So it might just have to be because your you interpret what people have said. Okay. There you interpret what they say in the minutes. In the minutes, yes. Yeah. So that leads to what was actually said per word. Okay. To what you interpret. So, yeah. Are you okay with recording just being attached instead of okay. Okay, because we have one? And we have one on that. We just don't know how clear it is, but we have one. When we just attach it then? And yeah. And have it as the minutes again? That's what I mean. Well, it's included in the minutes. I just it. feel so much more like I feel like that's more reliable than trying to do word for word. It's like, like someone listening too. Listening and writing it. Listening, and then if somebody wants to. Listen to the meeting again, they can listen to it instead mm -hmm. of. I think, Emily, is this one of those um, recordings that was difficult to understand? Like, was not a great audio quality. But well, we're that. getting better. Right. We're yeah, figuring right. it out. Right. So, going forward, we shouldn't have this problem anymore. True. Exactly. But so you can see, like, if we strike all this and include an unintelligible audio recording, how long have I ever studied? Possibly we not rewatched it. Okay. Possibly we could have both like C attachments below as a or we could put both the attachment with the comment that this is our interpretation. Yeah. In my opinion, then if you think that it's a yes, that the author's interpretation of comments made. And and if you have a transcript. What you should listen and read at the same time, you might be able to figure it out. Yes. Figure it out. But then going to yeah. I would prefer that it's not typed up and it's yeah. just a resume. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're learning. Yeah. We're learning. All the words. Um, all right. So, does everyone feel about including the current public comment as an attachment with the statement that this is an interpretation by staff as well as an attachment of the audio recording? Um, well, really, there wasn't anything else. From what I read, I mean, it's, it seems just fairly accurate. Yeah. 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 All of that. Okay, so that was yeah. already passed. That was just for my clarification. Okay, we don't know. So okay, now we're on to you know, send. Oh. <laughs> So did we have an audio of this one or no? Is, yes. This did is the one I believe that this was our extra meeting. Yeah. That was the state of Montana did that one. This was the, the one that we did. So for so budget. we did so we did get the budget. You yeah. were on the phone. I, I was on the phone. Yeah. yeah. I love the state recording this one. That one. The that state recording of budget and green. I don't think we had a full meeting. We didn't have a full meeting on the budget one. This is the one we just had. <laughs> no, and this was the this was the meeting in June. The June six meeting. The June six. We did the budget yeah. stuff and we did some other business. Yeah, I think it's a meeting if we have a quorum. Oh. Yeah, it was it was me. Oh, it was yeah. I just don't meeting. have that one. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the June twenty eighth. Okay. okay, it was more than a work meeting because we needed to get the budget sent off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the June 6th meeting for me, it's in my June tab. Yeah. So again, if we didn't record it, I suppose we need to just add our agenda to it. There are, um, yeah, this one I don't think we did have a full agenda. We didn't. This was not one. I think Cosby we had to leave and then Yona yeah. and I took over. Right. Now. On the back, it says public comment via Nona and Kim. Okay. Under number seven. 
Yeah. So if we don't have a recording, I suppose we just need to leave the title. Yeah. I have a question, Emily. Uh -huh. On the budget, there's these little tiny X's. Oh, that she should check them off. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wait, don't worry. I, I usually no, no. I try to make a, my own working copy. Okay. And that was that I forgot. So no, I that's that's no problem. I, and I just wondered great time. time. Okay. Okay. But we're just on minutes okay. now. We're not. Oh, not on budget. Not on budget. Let's go to the back one. Um, but it is budget part of the minute. No, no right. the no. minutes are just this for this one, just this one piece. Of yeah, so far we're approving our past record. Okay, all right. I'm not meeting adjourned on this one. Which is not like, oh, no, I think we did. I left, so I did not. I don't think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess also. Do we do we need it tonight? No. I have no Yeah. I that's yes, that's what I left. And yes. Um we, we started wrote early. Notes. We wrote notes. Yeah, we started we, early, like we started at eleven. Eleven ten. This is called the order eleven ten. So I left then, at twelve twenty five. I don't remember what time it ended, but I think that is probably not not important. It's okay. not important. I don't see any errors in what you and I wrote down in order, but it's been a while. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the June 6th meeting minutes? Well, I move to approve the June 6th meeting. Do I have a second? Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed to the sign. June 6th meeting passed. We still have June 28th to do. Uh, is that correct? Yes. So that is this one. Okay. That's no, we're up to present. So under 5E, Jenny suggests removing Facebook and Instagram since we're fixing the total. What I said is maybe we should have a total without them and then a grand total with them. Okay. Is what I meant by that. Okay, so say that one more time. Total with. So a total without. And then the grand total with everything. Does that make sense? And then we can see it without the Facebook hits and the Instagram hits. And we can see, but we want to see like our total because that's awesome. That we hit that we like because in the or in the visual show we have the social media hits and have a definite value. Yeah, I think it's interesting that it's like a boost to something awesome. It's like an email session. Yes, I think it's awesome. But then we can see it broken. I mean, and then under F, Nona, um, I, because Danny had asked for that before, and I had said that I needed to wait till the end of the fiscal year. So this month's reports, when I, when I, I give them, that. they will be the same. But then going forward, I change the spreadsheets for. Okay. Thank you. For okay. this month, I have the spreadsheets changed, so that will be okay. And, and I just I didn't mean it in a bad way. No, I just that's fine. I to read. I wanted to let you know. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so on the director part, uh, six C and D again. Are comments made? Not not section C or section D? under um. Roman numeral six, section yes. C, C and D. Okay. This was by Marin, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. I can't remember her. I mean, she did. She talked about this. Yeah. Do you remember her saying it, saying something different? Yeah. No. No, it's just that it is not necessary to write everything down. Okay. So I think Jan's point is we don't necessarily need to include comments by the acting by the acting. But director. then if branch reports are not written out, okay. they won't be recorded at all. Is that the understanding no. that I'm getting? Because well, I've been giving them verbally the last few months and including that in the minutes. Mm -hmm. My verbal, it's not been written out. Like when I say the themes for Big Sandy were this and this and this. I mean the themes for Ravenna were this and this and this. I haven't been yes. writing that out. So yeah. then Maybe would I not include those in the minutes or yeah. And actually, Jan, I don't see a point to adding section C just because it was a statement that 
later was viewed as kind of controversial by some of the public. So what are you saying? Can we leave it in just the, as um what do I call it? Frame of reference for later public comments. I don't think that's yeah. You I don't think, think it's a big deal. Okay. I I do have uh, number E. Mary requested a proposal regarding the Big City Library set forth to be revisited and discussed in the July meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we said we were going to discuss this. I can't remember that, but she was asking. Yeah. Yeah, she was asking. So Tracy, Kim asked Tracy in November during the trustee training about if the if the board is to present as a unified front. And um Tracy said yes, and I believe Janet asked if, but if someone disagreed, would there be discussion? And Tracy said, oh, yes, always discussion, but then you bring it to a vote, and 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 then whatever the board votes on, that's what is presented to the public as a unified, this is the board decision. And so Marin's, well, Bob. Marin's thought was that before any individual board member approached commissioners or big Sandy politicians or whatever, the board discussed it. That was what her request is based on, that the five of you discuss it as a board, decide if it is something that you even want to start looking at, vote on it, and then go from there. Because if the board votes to not pursue it, then it doesn't get pursued at all. So that's the that was pursued her, even in Big Sandy. Not talk about it ever. Oh, yeah. like not ever again. But like it would then not be something that would be. So it's a method not, to not. Yeah, so it's a method to get us all discussing to see how we all stand on. I think. But it, it you don't bring in any other. You don't. No, it's just what I have a list. Okay. It, it's just then that was her that was her request. So then okay. the this board has made an official decision whether yes we are going to explore this option or no this is not something we're going to look at at this time. And who would we be? Janet, Nona, Kim, Danny, and Nancy. Yeah. And so we would put it in a, in a motion. Yeah. If it was on the agenda, which it's not it's on this, the not on the so, agenda. For this not on the agenda. Think, yeah. But that that is it's not. But we can hold meetings in Big Sandy on this issue. Yeah, sure. You oh, can stay talk talking. about that. When I ask for for additions to the agenda, I mean, I'm not asking like sarcastically or like I really am looking for okay. what everyone wants to talk about. Oh. And at any time, you can email me from today at four o'clock until 48 hours before the next meeting. You can say, hey, you know, I really, I forgot I wanted to talk about this. Can you please put it on the agenda? I will make a note, I will put it on the agenda. Okay. So it's not just me, so I mean, it, like, yeah, I do type it up, but. I think just for the purpose of these past minutes, it's accurate to say that Marion requested this. We're not doing it this meeting, but during this meeting, yeah. during yeah. the June meeting, it was a lot of things. Next yeah. Um, I I think this is a subject that needs to be addressed in Big Sandy with Big Sandy officials and after very we, after, after, we make, after we make a motion. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So this is an time if you ask to put it on the agenda. We're not going to make motions. Okay. No, it's not on our agenda. No. Okay. All right. And That's it's not. And it's not normal. Like if. Even if you as a board decided to look into it, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Okay. Or any, I mean, that's not, it's well, we the, the discussion. Said in stone. A, a lot of things that we have said these last, that have, that have been said, not we, that, that have been said in the last few meetings is, well, we need to talk more about this thing, not just this, but a variety of things. And then there's always a lot of stuff going on. So then there isn't a lot of discussion that can happen. So yes, if, you, if, 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 you just if you decide you want to put it on the next meeting, you just call me, text me, email me, stop in, tell me that you want it on there. And then all right. What we'll if we decide, what if we have meetings in Big Sandy and we find that it might be possible 
but it won't be for like six months. Well, that that is that is separate than the board getting paid. Yeah, that's I mean, and that's just that that if the board is saying you don't want to do it, then we don't need to talk to anybody yeah, about it. Exactly. Right. All right. Okay. Got it. Okay. I did not invite the mayor. Oh. And or the commission. Is that in here? Yeah. Uh, it's Let's see. I have talked. I have talked to the mayor. I've talked to um, this brought up at city council, and I have talked to uh, Mr. Darren right. So that briefly. That yes. was another thing that, that Tracy talked about. There are no individual board members that should be talking outside of the board without like being directed by the board. Well, the soon for the minutes did that not occur last um, week? I'm not sure. Sorry, that but that might be. I don't understand that. I Sorry. think we well, have to the record what we did last year. So, Mayor, remember we this. You, you had said that you would invite the examiner and general invite the commissioners. Um, she may have mistyped that. She may have misremembered. Okay. So, you're so last you're year. saying I cannot talk to people and be sandy about this? No, no. no. We're no. just saying that this happened last week. As you can't say that, um, as my understanding from Tracy is, you can't say, well, the board is discussing this. And I am here as a representative of the board, but I can go as an individual. As an individual, you yeah. can go talk to all sorts of people. Okay, but so it's first not. Step is we get it on the agenda in, um, in an official capacity. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the first step. Okay. Waste any time. Right. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Go for it. Mm -hmm. okay. Approve the minutes? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. May I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Um, are we going to present what was actually what you wrote in here as the uh, public comment? Well, there was, oh, that's yeah, meeting. Because I noticed that some of them have a question behind us and who spoke the names. Yeah, they, what do we have a I was not here, so I think not. I believe that somebody. I mean, how did you come up with all this? Uh, Mayor wrote, she, Mayor wrote, wrote, she was the secretary he wrote last meeting because I was yeah. not. Yeah, and maybe she didn't it. know some of the names or the number. Or spelling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it kind of leaves um, a question of inaccuracy, yes. I think it's what I heard. So, who do you think she is? That is, he's on the, do you remember his name? He's from Big Sandy. He is. Don't I mean, you remember? He just said he gave me the apple. I know, but I'm yeah. saying well, that's, that's rich. rich. That's, yeah, that's, that's, rich. that's rich. But that's why I'm saying by putting you in his last name. Rich Jesperson. Jesperson. You have question marks. You in the comments. I okay. did not write them. So I know. Maybe I'm just saying. Jesperson. When you have question marks, when you're not sure about something, how uh, can it does? It become official minutes. I'm glad but, I thought that. Yes, thank you. And I will make yeah. that change. You are. That's why we go over the minutes and I'm asking you for amendments. Yeah. Okay, much better reader than we are. All right. Okay. Well, it was just Aaron doesn't know everybody. No, no. Thank you for going for the events. So was E. Karen Jesperson, who was yeah. I know? Yes. And over there. And it was Rich who talked about the ad only right. Okay, we added that. All right, that's corrected. Any other? What's the name? Just over the kid. Letter K. Is that Justina? Yes. Yes, it is. And okay. and we must be changed to Miss Freeman. Yeah. Okay, I got that one. Thank you. Any other changes or additions? Okay, I have a motion for the set of minutes as corrected. I move to accept the minutes as yes. corrected. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. All right. All right, moving on to budget. This is budget for 
June. 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 I don't even so know. that's the last, <laughs> okay. the last month of the fiscal year. <laughs> okay. Got it. And the budget, when will we hear on the budget? Way. The new budget? Who's the national? Um, it, sometimes in August, sometimes not by the trustee meeting, though. And then the August trustee meeting, the August trustee meeting is the 23rd. So it may not be until after that. Okay. I guess another one in my car. So if there's no um uh, let's see. Would you just explain it just a little bit? So you go across the line and it says, where is one? So this is the month when all our money could be used up. Is this yeah. true? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. From the last slide. From the last. You look at the, you look at the percentages. So here's the speech number. Mm -hmm. Better. So like page six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, say. Accounting period, sorry. Okay. Say library services. Uh, it says available $700. We must have spent the whole $700 in credit because there's nothing in the okay, so this percentage. Is, this is yeah. account 46,000 pay one of two on total county statement of expenditures. So that so I think it's like the third okay. page in the budget. Mm -hmm. so, this is the one with the three branches of the store and then yeah, and it and starts with one. It probably starts okay, with so. So part of this, it's my understanding. Um, we've talked at a few different meetings of, and Janet has reminded us that um, Cheryl had said that money can be moved around. So this is the one where she reconciles the books. So if we, if one of the accounts had gone over, like if you look at the budgets from the month before, like say something had gone over 200% over what was originally budgeted, she does line item transfers, I believe it is called. So if you look at all of these on this particular page, there aren't any that are over 100%. I don't know how she decides where to move money around from. Like, I don't have that knowledge. Um, but I do know that we went over the book buying budget for each brand like that we spent. So, but if you look at each one, it's oh. not... So there's original appropriation and then current appropriation kind of shows the change. So uh, the, that'd be off at the top. There's e, committed, committed, original. Because like travel, yeah. travel it shows the original. Like for Big Sandy, travel shows originally it was $200 and then she just did it $230. So sure. it's at 99%. Yeah. yeah. So, and I don't, I don't know, though. like, I don't. Did you see the number? That's where it's really hard because many of the times where it's put something well, in, it's denied. It looks like here. Okay. Well, I mean, like, the original and current looks like here. The travel that she talked about. The original book. I don't know. Okay. okay. Oh, so she moved. Well, but, no, but yeah, I think, I think maybe I should, I if you were asking your name, then it would be for the June, the June budget package. Yeah, it shows the main numbers. You'll see where it goes right over. But overall, we are at eighty eight percent of budget. Okay, for four beds. Yeah, and then oh, okay, four beds, maybe seven. Okay, seven. Trying for fiscal responsibility, right? That's what I said. Okay. 
So we're okay. Mm -hmm. I like it when Ron was Jim because he was he was a banker and he'd say, Okay, I see you've got three quarters of that. We've gone through 45% of that. And so we're at this month in June, and we're so we're always good at that. Okay. Another discussion regarding the budget. And I want people to accept the budget. And we need to spend second of the time. All bears say aye. And all the folks say sign. Budget queries. Reports. Um, all I don't have a whole lot for this this month. All three grantees are finishing up summer reading. Everybody's been busy with that. Um, each branch did do the. Um, each branch did the backpack buddies. Um, through public health. Um. Uh, Big Sandy had their finale. Summer reading today, and then Fort Benton and Gerald will finish up next week. Um, in Highwood, Brianna Bowman, who was the librarian this last school year, has become is now superintendent for the Highwood schools. So I'm not sure where it stands for the library, but I will reach out to her. Um, and I feel it is important that the board consider a, a plan of action to become more involved in Highwood. Um, if that looks like a bookmobile or one day a month where we try to go up for what, whatever that looks like, that would be for a future discussion. Um, and then circulation statistics. These are the checkouts. Um, that's all I compiled for the month. Janet, I correct me if I'm wrong. You said that we are only required to report the other statistics, statistics quarterly. Is that what you I, said? I, I, I believe that's what Darlene told me. I do not. I don't think I reported that, but that's what Darlene said. Oh, I thought you had. I yeah. thought you told me that at one well, meeting. Maybe so I'm I will look into that. That would be a report from. I'm just saying something this from Darlene. Mm -hmm. From Darlene Klein. Yes. So these are all. These are the checkout on the computer ones. Okay. So none of these are. Um, so, so, so report manual and so. That's just the report part. And that doesn't mean we have to come with the director of short also. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have some board materials that I will hand out when I'm done giving a report. I have copies of some of the things I'm going to read. One of the concerns that I believe was brought up at the last meeting when I was not present was about policy writing. Um, policy review, October 2021 to present. I was hired in August of 2021 to be the director of the Shoto County Library System. It was made clear in my interview that the position was not story time and reading, but budgets and policy writing. I said that I understood and was ready to do that kind of work. I attended the August Board of Trustees meeting in Geraldine as a guest, as I had not officially started the job. The September 2021 meeting was the first meeting I attended in my official capacity. At the October 2021 meeting, I brought a tub of policy documentation that I was able to find. Physical tub. I presented the problems that I had run into and asked for asked the board for assistance. This is part of the response from the minutes submitted by Janet Worrell. Janet and Nancy have some copies of the policies that have been updated. They both volunteered to come into the library to help go through the vast amount of paperwork to see what is needed and what may be salvaged. Moving forward, each document needs to be dated separately. These documents will need to be disseminated to trustees with updates. Here is the discussion for the November 2020, 2021 meeting for the minutes. 
This is still in process. Nancy gave Emily all of the copies of the latest revisions of the policy work that had been completed this spring. There will be no immediate need for Emily to meet with either Janet or Nancy, but they will be available if there are any questions or concerns. It was found that policy updating was going to be a bit harder than initially thought. No policies were drafted or reviewed at that time, at that meeting. As time went on, the policies continued to be on the back burner and no assistance was forthcoming from any of the board members. When I was hired, I was told that Janet and Nancy were on the policy committee. I, I do not recall a time that that committee was dissolved. After complaints were made to board members in June of 2022 that were later found to be blatantly false, I realized that policy work was not going to move forward unless I dove in on my own. At that point, I started with what I considered the least controversial policies, which are outlined on today's agenda. I only took what I had found on my computer and cleaned up grammar, spelling, and some formatting. I did not change any wording, as will be covered later this meeting. After I started presenting policies to the board, at no time did any trustees come to the library to offer help in writing or updating policies. I am not sure what else to say about that besides I have done nothing secret or illegal in this process. I have sent each policy to the trustees and asked for any changes that may be needed. They are then presented for readings and discussion at trustee meetings. The Board of Trustees has always had the final say. One thing to keep in mind with policy development is that the frontline workers have to be on board with the policies as they do the boots on the ground enforcement of policies. That does not mean that they get to write and or approve policy, but they should have a voice. Number two, community conversations, creating a better world through conversations. Start them, have them, hear them, learn from them. I am currently planning a year-long program series on having community conversations. I am going to be handing out a tentative calendar of events for the series. It will kick off with a two-hour presentation by staff from Empower MT on Tuesday, August 15th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can read more about the training goals and outline in the attached materials. Every other month, we will be hosting Table Talk, an opportunity to talk to a variety of folks one-on-one. -on -one. When this part of the program launches in September, there will be ground rules, expectations, and guidelines laid out clearly to facilitate positive and constructive discussion. Conversation starter cards will be on hand to help initiate conversations. As the series progresses, there may be a slight change in format depending on those involved. In October, we are hoping to host Courtney Cowgill of Humanities Montana. Her program information is also included. The rest of the series is a bit more fluid, including ideas and tentative <clears throat> programs depending on availability. Other ideas include the Human Library, an Everybody Reads book club selection, and an interfaith panel discussion. The program will conclude in July with the community forum to discuss what we have learned and where we would like to go as a community. Other programming currently scheduled include two monthly book clubs, regular story times, and other programs that have already been in place, as well as a collection development presentation scheduled for Monday, August 21st at 5.30 p.m. and another for sometime in midwinter. Number three, mental, emotional, and physical health of staff. Over the course of the last year, the Fort Benton librarians have been accused of promoting pedophilia, sexualizing children, and encouraging the objectification of children. We were accused, although not directly, of forcing summer reading participants to decorate a big gay parade float, and then we enticed children to be on the float with candy, telling them that it was a library float. None of that was true, and we were not afforded the opportunity to defend ourselves due to gross negligence on the board not following standing policy. The, the assertion that we entice children to participate in the parade float, along with the other accusations listed above, has been continually spread through public comment during board meetings, letters to the editor, email, and word of mouth. As staff, we do not feel publicly supported or defended by the board. This has taken a total on our mental, emotional, and physical health. After the April meeting in Geraldine, I had a full panic attack 
in the Geraldine Library after most of the participants had left. This included hyperventilation and a brief loss of vision. After that meeting, I was physically unable to eat, to eat anything besides one banana and one scone for the next 48 hours. This meant that I went a total of 56 hours with minimal nutrition. I cried more over the course of that week than I ever have in my life. My sleeping has been affected as well as my general ability to complete life tasks. Being accused of promoting pedophilia, sexualizing children, and encouraging the objectification of children are serious accusations. It has also affected my ability to be out in the community without anxiety. I sat at a middle school football game last fall and listened to a local pastor spread disinformation about the library to those seated around him. Again, at no time has the staff felt publicly supported and defended by members of the Board of Trustees. If anything, we have felt animosity and hostility from some board members. This makes it hard for us to fully serve the public to the best of our ability. Other symptoms of these accusations include increased migraines, increased physical ailments and sickness, brain fog, and making mistakes on basic library tasks. We are all working our hardest and to the best of our abilities for the good of the Shoto County Library System. We ask the same of the Board of Trustees. I will now read a letter from Adrian Miller. <clears throat> Shoto County Library Board of Trustees public comment letter July 26, 2023, board me. To whom it may concern, I'm writing this letter in my professional capacity as a partner at Sullivan Miller Law in Billings, but it's also personal because I grew up in Fort Benton and was a frequent patron of the library. I represent the employees of the Fort Benton Library. The purpose of this letter is to remind certain individuals in the community that Montana has strong defamation laws. I have read letters to the editors, letters to the library board, the petitions submitted to the board and statements given at board meetings. In those, my clients have been falsely accused of promoting pedophilia, sexualizing children, and encouraging the objectification of children. While people may have a First Amendment right to lie about the contents of books, spreading lies about others is not protected speech. Neither is harassing, threatening, or bullying individuals who do not agree with your views. I will not allow my clients to become casualties in this current crusade, and I strongly urge people to stop defaming and persecuting the Fort Bend librarians. I also note that the US Supreme Court has already determined that public libraries cannot, quote, prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, or other matters of opinion, unquote, and that the First Amendment includes, quote, affording the public access to discussion, debate, and the dissemination of information and ideas, unquote. See Board of Education, Island Trees Union, V. Pico, 457 U.S. 853, 1982. Segregating and stigmatizing certain books based upon religion, politics, or personal opinions is unconstitutional. This is particularly true when the restrictions are content-based restrictions, i.e. singling out LGBT books. Given the law, the board should be concerned about the legal ramifications if it capitulates to the demands of those seeking restrictions on specific books. Just as the First Amendment protects your right to complain about books, it also protects another's right to freely access those same books in a public library. Sincerely, Adrian Miller. I will finish with a letter from Bruce Newell, not during my report. Um, Bruce Newell, retired Montana librarian, Kenny Arlitz, director of the Central European University, and Aaron Laframboise, director of library services, Medicine Spring Library, Blackfeet Community College. This was sent out on the, this was sent out on the, um, listserv that goes to anyone who has signed up for it. Um, the subject is your work matters. Number two, your job in a nutshell for board members. First, thanks for agreeing to serve your community on its library board. Great libraries have great boards, and now you have been entrusted with helping your library become great. Being a library board member is a privilege as well as a serious responsibility. As a board member, you have three primary duties. Number one, hiring and retaining a great director. Number two, matching your library's policies to the evolving needs of your community. And number three, ensuring you have the resources, staff, facilities, collection, 
services, and most of all, money to provide your entire community with sufficient library content and services. These three duties get easier as you get to know your library director and your fellow board members. Doubtless over time, you will learn to better understand your library's finances. And over time, you'll learn to listen with newly tuned, tuned library ears to your community, becoming exquisitely alert to both opportunities and challenges to growing a great library. We found that everything works better when everyone shows up prepared for board meetings and when all understand each meeting's content. This makes meetings more constructive and as a bonus, more fun as the entire board and your library structure is able to work as a team. Above all, we encourage you to get in the habit of asking questions. Libraries are complicated. Your community is complicated. Heck, the world is complicated. And in all things, we're all learning as we go along. Consider going out for coffee with others on your board. Invite your director out for a beer. This investment in time will make you a better board member and help your library's board function better. We've seldom seen a great library that didn't have a great library board. It takes time to build a great board. Thank you for your commitment. Thanks for reading Your Work Matters. I believe they're putting together like a weekly video board training. I spoke with him on the phone yesterday and got his permission to do that. So I will be handing out um, the statements that I read, the calendar of my, of the proposed, or of the scheduled um, presentations, the ex, the description of the Empower Montana and Courtney Cowgill. Um, I was, I am submitting this written as written because like Janet said, it's not what's said in meetings, but it's what is done. So that will become part of the public record. Thank you for your honesty. Uh, Janet, you expressed a desire to comment. Okay, my state. We're just one. This is all under the director's report. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That will happen. This is all right. Okay. 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 She's her client and her ending representative. Um, yeah. I, 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 I just want to clear that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would rather. Um, that's one of the things we can go into closed session for is okay. closed session location. Cool. 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 There are only two reasons you can go into an executive session one is to discuss personnel, and two is for pending litigation. Those don't are not to be discussed. Yeah. Would you wish to go on to executive session today, or would you prefer to have it on the agenda for a uh, meeting? For next meeting. Okay. Sure. We have a lot of policy things to get through today. Mm -hmm. um, so announcement states to remember, I have the Empower MT on there. I am working on reaching out to Women's Club Lions Club. I've already talked to the superintendent, the new superintendent, um, and a couple of other community groups. Um, Sammy Joe will be coming from Geraldine and Darlene will be coming from Big Sandy. That's paid travel, paid time, their travel time plus their time here. Um, and then the collection development program that was requested did get pushed back a week due to that. So that is August 21st at 5.30. But then we are also planning one in either December or January. And now that we have the Zoom option, that's an option too. We're thinking this will either be quarterly or biannually to keep it. And we can do it at different different days and times if um, people request. So um, those are those. Um, last month, I prepared binders. Kim, can you hold up your binder? Um, so I only recently found this binder in my cabinet by my desk. So as far as I know, this is what the latest policy was. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to read through. If you have your black binder, great. If you don't, if there's somebody next to you that you can share with, please do that. In the pink binder. The vision statement. This is just this. You do not necessarily have this. Kim might have one. I don't know. Yeah. That's the old one. This is what was on record. 
vision statement. You can look at your new one though and see if I read anything different. The Shoto County Library is committed to providing the cost efficient manner uh, center for reliable information that will address the needs of all age groups through enhance. Well, okay, so this one is still in anyway. This is different. It is enhancing the ease of access to and sharing of information by utilizing technology, ensuring uh, diverse variety of materials on hand, providing access to advanced and developing technology, including internet access, offering interlibrary loan service, sponsoring program, sponsoring community programs, and preservation of historical and current documents in a safe and secure environment. So the new wording that was approved by the board in August says the Shoto County Library is committed to providing a center for reliable information that will address the needs of all age groups by maintaining a collection of diverse materials. So that was number two in the original one that I just read. Providing access to advanced and developing technology, including internet access and ensuring availability of information, which was number three. Offering interlibrary loan services, which, or loan service, I'm sorry, no S, which was number four, that one stayed the same. Sponsoring slash co-sponsoring and some more supporting community programs, which before it said sponsoring community programs. Um, and then securing historical and current documents in a safe and secure environment, which is, it said preservation before. We don't really do preservation here though. Like we're not taking- That's a specific library. That's a term. very specific library term. Okay. Um, so I combined two of the technology ones. Um, into one. So instead of six bullet points, there were five. That was the change that was made for that. And that was approved. Um, mission statement. The, this is, I'm reading out of the pink binder. The old one. The purpose of the Shoto County Library in Fort Benton, Montana, along with its branch libraries in Geraldine, Big Sandy, and Highwood, is to serve the county's residents as an, as an accessible center of reliable information without restrictions of censorship or violation of policy, privacy. For every reader, the best book, for every question, the best answer, for every need, the best resource, for every encounter, the best experience, for every library dollar, the best value, for every person, a place to belong. So is that one? That's more important. Okay. That one was also approved August 24th, 2022. Everybody. Our board is than hours of operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hours of operation. Okay. So this was at the time. Um, Geraldine's hours have fluctuated a bit. So, but this is like a living document, right? Yeah. Okay. So that one, I didn't want to not include it because it was in there. Um, objectives. Is that the next one that I listed? Yeah, there's the foundation fellow there. Well, I'm on, on, on my uh, let's do it. Objective. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Objective. Okay. Oh, is this one? Okay. Sorry. Another. Objectives one to provide the best possible library service within the financial guidelines set by the Library Board of Trustees. Two, to select materials that will help meet the educational, informational, and recreational needs of all people served by the library. Three, to provide easy access to these materials. And four, to select materials that will achieve a balance between materials of contemporary interest while creating a collection of permanent value and to acquire material that reflect differing points of view. <clears throat> The same yeah. Okay, so if you if you were to look physically at this paint binder, it was done in Roman numerals before, and I changed it to numbers. Oh. Yeah, so change that was approved September twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. Functions: <clears throat> the libraries in Shoto County work together to provide a complete library network. Okay, so that um, changed a bit. Library. So that is a change that was made. Organizational structure. The original in the pink binder says the Shoto County Library's function 
under the direction of the Shoto County Library Board of Trustees, who are appointed by the county commissioners. The Montana State Library in Helena serves as a valuable resource in guiding public libraries throughout the state. The Montana State Library Commission, appointed by the governor, employs the state librarian. Yeah. Yeah, Cooperation with other agencies. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Could could I ask some questions? Mm -hmm. right. So in our last June meeting, we did set up if we asked, we did oh we did put a policy that two people will look through the policies. I don't is think that's accurate. No, it oh, is. It is. I think okay, so Janet, 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 Janet I'm, what, almost, I'm what? almost sure we made a motion and to a form a policy. Okay, to form. Or to form, form, form a committee. Okay, I'm committee. sorry. She just said earlier that a committee was formed and she read it and she said, Janet. And when I, I started employment, okay. the current, I was told okay. that the current policy committee was you and Nancy right yeah. okay. and, so, and she does not remember it being dissolved I, I sort of found it dissolved okay so Janet year. do you have a question about because we're working through, through policies no do you have a question? I have a question isn't this something that the committee could look at with you I think this is important because there has been a lot of discussion and accusations of changing policy. So I think it makes sense that we all go through and see okay. that the well, change. Can I add something first, Lydia? If you felt that no one was helping you, did you ask for help? Did you ask? Did you? We um, kept, we talked about it like every single meeting. Yes, I feel that I did ask for help. Do you guys remember if you asked for help? Yes. I can see in one of the minutes, and I can look it up. I just don't have them in front of me. I think that at the been... next meeting, you said I disband the committee because I'm using, I'm using the IF. I've library. looked through a lot of minutes in the last two days, Janet. There is no oh, disband. I can find them the then. It was in the next month's meeting where you said I will disband that. I am using the EF library in Kalispell, which has broke away from the library. I am using the Libby. It would be called, it's a Libby library, but it's a different county. Lincoln you, county. You use three sources and you wrote them down. They're in the minutes. Janet, okay. if you could. Uh, no, I will find it right now, Kim, because I, I know exactly what she's talking about because I, I think I have them all. I have them all. I don't, Hold up. I don't remember just talking about expanding up. No. I thought it changed. I just feel that if instead of I think we should, we all would like to learn, work with you. It isn't like we we would like to help Emily. Well, it's not okay. No, no, that is not the impression that I'm getting because I reached out to meet with you and you refused to meet with me. I reached out to meet not with you. No, no, no. Policy. But that Danny, what did we talk about at our meeting? Talking about with you. That's about the booklet, which is great. And did we talk about policy, about how I had presented the policies? No, no, that's all what we, we did. did talk about it. Like not everyone said. So Nancy and I talked about policy. I know. It's upset and she has to go for a little You bit. get upset also. Right, right. But it's oh. Please continue. No. Okay. Okay. So on. Wednesday, December 15th, 2021. It is. Okay. Why don't we continue? Yeah, well, here, no, with other libraries. Yeah, that's where I trade for the policy then. Okay. I'm on cooperation with. Oh. I did get to read there. I haven't, I don't think I have. Yeah, I don't think yeah. um, it's in a different binder. Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the past. The I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Forward. Yeah. Would you, uh, maybe, maybe I, mean, the, I, have, I have them all. The, yeah, and they're posted currently online. Yeah, I can find it. I did write it. My comment is, if I may, it doesn't matter who writes the policy, it is not policy until we approve it. 
So Emily has research policy for her civil okay. She's connected out, but until we approve it, it is not policy. So it's in the November twenty-six. Nobody has yeah. done policy without our permission, without our agreement, until we approve it. <laughs> it is actually in November of 2021. There is no need for Janet or Nancy. When you going to use my research from Missoula for scope, EF Lincoln for brand size, and imagine IF flat print. So the quote is there will be no immediate need. Okay. For Emily to meet with either Janet or Nancy, but they will be available if there are any questions or concern. That does not say disband. It seems like disbanding a committee would be a very specific thing. Okay. So, but, and I did list out those were the policy, those were the different libraries that I was drawing from. Right. It's recommended that when small libraries draft policy, they look to policies that are already like approved by the larger libraries in the state because they have lawyers on staff that do that. So what tends to happen is theirs has already gone through the law process. And then I had picked the imaginative, which is, so, I mean, it's whatever. And then Lincoln County, because like our county, they have a main branch to some branch, let's say a three library system like our county. I have not been looking at the imaginative ones now that the, with everything that's going on, I've been looking at Lewis now for regional okay. policy wording. So that's- So I don't think, I don't think we're arguing with you on that set. I mean, we appreciate that you're doing this, but it went back to setting policy, which is actually in our manual. It said, much of the trustees work deals with policy making policies, reviewing policies, intercepting policies, enforcing policy, and monitoring their effectiveness. So all this is about is being able to look over. You know, it's really hard because sometimes we get six to eight of them. I can have my I have a policy thing right here of policies a month and we don't truly we just need the over. Okay. But Janet moving back you just now stated that Emily dissolved a committee without no, I, okay. people. Okay. Do I, you do you no, change your mind was, about no, that? I did not say well it I'm, was in her director's it didn't. It, but all I, I wrote down is no need. She couldn't find it. I just wrote no need for Janet or Nancy. She I am using Missoula, Lincoln, and Imagine. Okay. She did find okay, it. Okay. I'm glad she did. But it seems like your interpretation of history was a bit confrontational okay. Okay. and not necessarily accurate. Okay. So, according to the will day say that. Okay. So according to the dates I presented, three in August of 2022, three in September of 22, three in October of 2022, two in December of 2022, one in February of 2023, and two in April of 2020. Can we say that like one to three policies per meeting is a good number to be able to look over. And when, since we've met with Tracy, we know we do not approve them on the first reading. We need to go to second or third reading on policy. So if she presents them, and then would it also help to keep the highlighted in of what's been changed and what hasn't, yes. and put the drafts on there until it's approved. Right? Correct. All of that things are good. I think so. I mean, that would help maybe clear up some of the, yeah, there. I think our current system does work with the entire board having input into the policy. And then we know it's being updated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I really like the fact that and in one of these, it shows draft. Yeah. Approved and adopted, mm -hmm. and they have signatures. 
they should never have signatures. Did. That is, you are very right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, we in the Orion Blue mm -hmm. Pen. Okay. So and we it, should have done it that day. That is. Yes. I mean, that was just an oversight and then, did not happen. And then I have never got the original. I still have the draft. Okay, that in the black binders, I had it out last month. I believe that they were in there. Okay. It doesn't say draft on it. It just, it has, I don't think, what does it say in your binder? Yeah. Um, um, mine is awesome. Right. Starting and running a home right. business. But yeah, they just can't get it. it. No. Oh, and then there's lots of things. They're just dated at the bottom. Right. So, yeah. so that's what should be in the, that's what I'm talking about. That's in the, the binders that I put together for the last month. Okay. So, but that is true. They, that day we did it. I should have gone upstairs and taken the draft watermark off and printed them and had everyone sign. So after you look at the one that we did approve, mm -hmm. if there's changes, maybe then that can be brought up from the policy mm -hmm. committee and okay. we can go from there. Okay. Right. Um, right. 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 I would just don't like the policy. Yes. Okay. Totally Thank agree. You. But I do like that we have a backbone of right. where we start and then we know what's being changed. Mm -hmm. Because it has drafts and it has the highlighting and all of that. Are we okay. currently are we currently accepting the final agenda? We no. Okay, that's the new so yeah. Okay. Uh no, no we're, 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 so we're, we're on operations from the library. So in the pink binder, it says working together with other libraries through interlibrary loan and resource sharing provides advantages for the patron and the taxpayer as well. The library participates in activities sponsored by the Pathfinder Federation the Montana Library Association, the Montana Shared Catalog, the Montana State Library, and the American Library Association. The library works with librarians in the Shoto County Public Schools and at the Schwinden Library at the Montana Agricultural Center, referring patrons and sharing materials. Um, so that the wording was changed a bit, but it was just kind of shifted. Again, I pulled out those five main things. Um, so that one was looked at October 26 of 2022. Cooperation with other agencies out of the pink binder. Materials are shared with the county school in Geraldine, Fort Benton, Big Sandy, Highwood, Shoto County Superintendent of Schools, Missouri River Medical Center, Bear Paw Development Corporation, Sunrise Bluffs Estates, Montana Agricultural Center, and Family and Human Services. Shoto County Extension Office often provides backup references, facilitators, and equipment for various library activities. So if you look at this pink one, it was in paragraph form. So part of what I changed was pulling them out into bulleted form. I feel it's easier to read personally. That was October 26, 2022. Closing of facilities in the pink binder, the libraries will close for the 11 legal holidays each year. Um, so something for the policy committee, we need to look at, we need to change that to federal, maybe. Anyway, okay. um, when a holiday falls on Sunday, the following Monday is a holiday. When a holiday falls on Saturday, the holiday will be celebrated on the preceding Friday. The director, librarian on duty, or the chair of the library board is authorized to close the library under unusual circumstances. Um, what I had found in a date when I was going through things is so this particular board looked at this and approved it on October 26th of 2022, but apparently it had been reviewed on September 23rd of 2020. So that's that's an example of what I'm trying to add. Which I like that. I like that yeah. it was reviewed like that. But there was a lot that I found trip. that did not have those things. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that even for Sandra's um, schedule of looking at them, she did not have that either. Um, like it would just said undated. Yes, um, from the pink binder, all gifts such as books, magazines, pamphlets, DVDs, and CDs are accepted with the understanding that the librarians and the board of trustees may use their discretion as to their use and disposal. The same criteria will be used for adding gifts to the collection as is used for the purchase of similar material. All memorial books should be retained until their physical state or outdated information contained therein precludes use. At that time, they must be disposed of in the same manner as other materials in the collection. Librarians do not appraise materials. Receipts for the number of items, but not the value of items donated, will be given upon request. So I don't know how close or not to this that one is. You added in furniture, furnishing, and yeah. audiobooks, which I don't know when this was last approved. So that's good that you're adding in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then memorial books and materials we put in. That was looked at December 7th, 2022. And then this gives policy, it just restates it and then the addition of the signature. That's if someone wants proof of. And then the trustee and foundation calendar that will change. Um, I don't know if I printed up a new one that Janet requested actually or no, no. I thought I did. Oh, no, I did for you guys. So on the bottom, does it say, what does it say on the bottom? So was the president to maintain the agenda with the time and location where we posted it. So that was asked to change. So I added that. Okay. So then if you look at the child safety policy, I'm at the bottom of that one, it should also say adopted 6 25 2020. Mm -hmm. So that was the last time that one had been looked at. Right. So I am trying, I will, moving forward, that will all be. Like that's what it will be. And then the next time it's approved and the next time it's approved, I mean, that's all then becomes part of that record. Mark. So we haven't approved this one. We reviewed it in December, but we haven't approved it. No, it was, oh, it, it was, yeah. Okay. Um, we could have just, I don't know if I need to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can change that because it, it was. I can go back to the minutes and then we'll check it out. Okay. Um, I don't know what that was. Anyway. That one was already on record. And I don't I don't believe we changed any of that one. And then the social media policy was a new one that was written. Mm -hmm. And I believe we requested that you were right. And then the internet workstation etiquette. We had made some, I made some changes. It was revised to 423. That's another one. So number nine says the Shoto County Library Board of Trustees reserves the right to change the policy at any time. So that's why I just have revised on 423 because that could be like a constant. Okay. Like anytime we revise it, anytime okay. we make that change. Um, and then the internet use and safety one was approved by that revised and approved by 423. Is that month year or month year? Okay. Yeah, but not really clear if you could add May 2023. So that is to date all of the ones that we have. We did not move did not know. what is the medium one yes yeah and and policies are living documents they can be looked at and amended at really at any time we we are supposed to look at them at least once every three years that does not mean that we have to wait three it's not um, an insurance company we don't have to wait three calendar years plus one day to review them again so it was, it's my belief, Nona, if you wanted to ask to put that or take it to the committee, I guess, Janet, is that what you're saying? That there would be the committee would then look at it. So then that would be something we could do. Yeah, so that, so that's kind of part of the, yeah. So um, I, I was just going through, like, I've not, there's not any collection development policies that have been written or rewritten. There's not, I did start to present, I mean, but there, none of that has come in front of the board. Um, so set a policy video. Now I believe that's what it would be. So Janet, your and maybe no, your idea is that the policy committee would review existing policies to see if they need to be updated and brought to the board for discussion, or do you want to write policy? We would like to review them, yeah. or the I should say the committee. Is, it sounds like you're very interested in being on the committee. Okay, would would the committee be working with the director? I don't know if that's a good goal for you, Janet. Like, I don't know if you and Emily necessarily have a good working relationship at this I'll point. Oh, yeah, it's just great. Okay. 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 No, you didn't. No, I don't agree. I would say that. That was fun. 
right. Um, I have a motion to appoint Danny and Janet to the policy committee. I believe that we appoint Janet and Danny to the policy committee. Second. I think it would have to like uh, zero probably notes on it. <laughs> That's why I didn't say very Yeah. Uh, any public comment on the policy committee? Yes, Ms. Bonnell. Um, so you guys know me, Lady Bonnell and Hybrid. I just have a couple of comments on the director's report in general. Ma'am, no, no. So this is about policy. Oh, okay. Sorry. Did we? Well, you get one chance to speak. There's. You get one chance to speak. If you do it during agenda items, it needs to be on the item currently being discussed. Okay. So we're off the director's report. Yep, we're discussing because there is no action. Okay. But this is about the policy committee, and this is your one time to speak during this meeting. Okay. Can I? Speak during about the director's report since you just discussed it. No, um, no. Right. The way from my research, the way agenda item comment works. <clears throat> All right, but this is counts as your oh, time no. to speak. No, I'm not I'm thinking things. since it's our first time through. Like, okay. Yeah. All right. As long as she doesn't. Emily, speak. All right. Any other public comment on the policy committee? All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. Motion carries. So the new business would be um, Zoom slash virtual meeting protocols for voting. Okay. So the idea is it needs to be in our bylaws or just a separate policy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it in the bylaws of the state commission. Like I looked up the state commission bylaws because they do their meetings through Zoom and they vote and do all that stuff. I couldn't find it in my brief search. Okay. Um, I can do more look into that more and see if there's already a wording in place by the commission and take that to the policy committee. Okay. I kind of got this. Janet, what is your concern um, with the Zoom, the use of Zoom? Oh, I can, I'm looking that up now. Okay. It should be put in the bylaws and also set up as a policy. When public comment is recorded, is it important to balance the right of privacy? Using Zoom to record public comment can be a subject of privacy, you will need the consent of the participants. FOIA applies to public comment records. Zoom meetings usually have an ID and a password. And I did ask um, Robin because they do theirs and that's what she says. That's how the Zoom meetings automatically are set up. And then you have to, since it records from the beginning to be able to access the meeting, you have to pull Click that you consent that you know you're being recorded. Correct. Okay. So okay. that is all part of Zoom. So and it announces and that Montana it's 2 3 212. This is the Montana code. Okay. So that's it's what we're doing. Audio today. finding is made. It needs to be designated as official, and a log of the timestamps are required for the purpose of assessing the portion of the meeting. Right, exactly. Yes. Is, is that public? Is that just part of the public meeting law, or is it under a specific subject? It's Montana AOC code. code. Yep. Two dash three dash two one two. Yep. Okay. Uh, Emily, do you know if that's under public meeting law, or if it's under just? I can look it up later. I just wanted to see you off the top of your head. I know. Okay. I'll look it up later. But yeah. So okay. So Kalei sent that wording also. Yeah, she today. did, and she was. The same wording as I had. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I sent it on to everyone. Yeah. Yes. She did. So so all of that is currently in place for this meeting. Yeah. I want to assure okay. the board. So okay. that is all. In the place. Other, other thing would be during is us as trustees, if we go on Zoom, being able to to respond. Right. To, yeah. Being able to. So that's okay. what we're talking about right now, right? right is like yeah, we need to policy. have the policy to yeah. look at that. Yeah. Absolutely. So it sounds like a discussion is one, is it legal to record by Zoom? And I think the answer everyone agrees is yes, as long as we notify the attendees. Okay. Yes. And then the second is for a board member to vote by Zoom with may need standalone policy. Is that yes? To yeah. put in our bylaws. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can direct the policy committee to develop a Zoom voting policy. And, and look at the motion. I don't think we do. Okay, we have motion. Do we? 
Right. Are we down to elections? All right. Janet, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think with elections, we just asked for nominations for the positions. Currently, Kim is board chair and Janet is vice chair. If anyone would like to hear. I would. Um, I would like to go to executive session for a few minutes. I don't know if we can. Is it about pending litigation? It's about um, personnel. 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 I guess that's what you're calling. So if it's about board members, board members are not paid by the county, so they're not considered. Mm -hmm. so if it's about us. It's about the board. Yes, it's yeah. about the board. Okay. Yes. I think you just have to let her rip in public. Um, really? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. It's not going to be pleasant. Okay. Okay. I don't want to stand up so everybody can hear me. Um, this is yesterday. There were a lot of emails back and forth between Kim and Janet, and um, they were very attacking. Okay. And um, uh, let's see. Well, I'll start with this page. Okay. I would like to begin by stating that Chairwoman Kim Hibble has committed various violations that I believe need to be stated publicly. For failure to call to further motion for the removal of the cat residing at the Toyota County Library, despite several complaints, a motion might have protected us from lit litigation. For conspiring to remove a board member based on ageism, as well as singling out said board members' personal medical condition via emails to four of the five board members. For failure to uphold the current policy regarding evaluations of the director and simply dismissing it and allowing our director to make a self-evaluation. I felt that was very serious and very wrong. And um, let's see, for not upholding decorum, during public comment, and this is hard. I, I get that that was really hard again. Um, for not helping when people commented to have rules and keep those people to those rules. And some people were able to talk twice. Some people argued with each other. And I would like to see that never done again. And for um, not talking, for tabling and not talking about the petition, um, we've never done that yet. And I don't even know if when we are, whatever failure to act on creating motion to either adopt the petition or reject them or even create a subcommittee to further review the demands. It has caused unnecessary tension throughout the library, throughout community. Strong leadership was needed to avoid hostilities. Um, let's see what else. Then under the code, Montana State Library Trustee Manual states, the job of a trustee. As a trustee, you are entrusted by the public to look after its interests. You are also accountable to the public. Trusteeship is a working relationship with the community, library staff, and fellow trustees. What does a trustee do? This states, a trustee knows the organization of the library board. However, in the last meeting, Kim has stated that the trustees are equal to the commissioners, and that, that's totally wrong. There was also admission of not knowing the Montana State Library laws and bylaws and Robert's rules. Um, a few lines down in the trustee manual, a trustee knows how to work effectively in a group. And she broke trust, I feel, by conspiring to remove a trustee from the group by her age and her health by emailing only four out of five board members. Uh, let's see. Yeah. A trustee remembers a library board acts as a whole, and an individual trustee can, may act on behalf of the library only when authorized to do by the board. However, Kim disclosed the petitioner signers' private information, including their names and email addresses, sometimes the phone numbers were on there too, despite not getting the board approval. In fact, the board minutes, minutes had not been approved prior to the, the private information <laughs> that was disclosed. Therefore, Kim broke a golden rule for board members that we should be asked to respect confidential information and not divulge information until some action was taken by the board. And then I'd like to read an email from you. 
and this is hard for me to read this. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Um, I think we wrote to you, I don't know when, is, this is June 14th. Dear Nona, Danny, and Janet, I don't know why Sissy wanted the names. I also don't think we can with- Wait, 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 wait. wait. I do not know if we can do private board. Yeah. Okay. Emails that discuss a member of the community during okay. an open meeting. Okay, then let me go to the very last line. Okay. 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 I apologize. There's two lines. I apologize for not giving more notice to the rest of the board. I think I did the legally correct thing. I am open to learning if anyone has a code or reference to show that we have legal grounds to withhold future submissions we receive. Then, also, I will understand if you guys vote me off the board. My term as leader has not been successful in terms of cohesiveness or productivity, but if you are, please do it sooner or later. Thank you. And, and then I guess I feel that you should not be reelected. Okay. I would, I would say most of the accusations I don't necessarily agree with, but Sounds like it's interpretation. Interpretation. Um, yes, if I remember the email um, where you're accusing me of ageism, I believe I tried to be tactful and basically say I am not communicating effectively with another board member. Well, this has been a very hard board. We and know. I believe that email went to four board members. Yes. Besides, and not myself. Yes, because there are people I do not communicate well with. And well, I don't want to. That isn't how you do it. And we, I don't think we communicate well with each other at all. And I think it's very sad and very horrible. So um, I thought it would be kind of enjoyable to be on the board, and it has not been, yeah. not for one minute. And I'm That's sorry. Okay. I, I'm really sorry, but those are my feelings. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think the, I think the next step in the pro process is probably you nominate a separate person to be chairperson. I think you can nominate whoever you want, and then it goes to the vote. I mean, it has to be a trustee. And am, I on, am I on camera? Yes, I think we're on a couple. I think we're on a couple. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's, that's, how, that's, that's how I feel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question for Danny. Um, when we went to the training in Lewistown, which is fantastic, about the government. I believe Tracy talks about the triangle, right? That's the whole difference of library boards versus other things is that a library board and the commissioners are, that's that weird balance of power that she talked about. That's There's the tension and the not tension. So it's so not that one is above the other. They are under the triangle, but she didn't talk about them a lot. They're, they're basically separate, but equal is the... It's so the I did ask right Harvey now. this morning, he was commissioner for 12 years, and he said, actually, he said, the board of the commissioners are elected by the public. Right. And that's why it makes a difference. I think the we should ask Tracy, because she's the expert in that. Elected is by the public. Great way of explaining that. Tracy, I... I mm -hmm. yeah. If I remember right, the idea was we're appointed by the commissioners, but then all they can do if they don't like what we're doing is defund the library. So we're basically lateral because they are not our direct supervisors that can fire us. But either way, we're still okay. at the okay. chairman. So um, I think Nona, you, if you have, it sounds like you have very strong feelings, but I think you should nominate a chairperson probably besides me. <laughs> um, I would like to nominate Annie. She told me, you told me earlier, you didn't want to. I would like to nominate Nancy. I, I, I think you can only nominate one. one. Okay. Right. Are there any other nominations? Okay, I withdraw my nomination for Danny. Nancy, would you serve as chairman? <laughs> I would really like not to. I don't do well with confrontation. Yeah. Just for the either. just for entertainment of the audience, I ended up chairman because there was a round of audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, uh, which I would I would say we're maybe still in that. You can nominate your or can you nominate yourself? I think you can well, nominate yourself, Nona. I I haven't been on your long. Okay. Then I, it's Janet. I think you can nominate Janet. I nominate Janet. Okay. All right. Okay. Are there any other nominations for chairperson? No. 
Well, I'll nominate myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would nominate him again. Thank you. All right. Now I think we go to a easy vote. And we do show of hands instead of vocal. All right. All in favor of Janet for chairperson, raise your hand, please. You have two. All right. All in favor of Kim for chairperson. We have one. Two. All right. Janet is now chairperson. All right, now we need nominations for vice chair. <laughs> Nona, would you be interested in I vice will, chair? I will do vice chair. Yep. Okay, I nominate Nona for vice chair. Are there any other nominations? I nominate Dan. All right, there's nomination for Dan. All in favor of Nona for vice chair? Here's that you zero votes. No, I not that I vote for Danny. I vote for Danny. All right. All in favor of Danny. All right. Danny and Vice here. Okay. So they change the office immediately. I believe so. All right. Don't we adjourn the meeting? No, we are in public comment portion of the meeting now. All right. And Janet will be chair to preserve the decorum as no one Mind if I use the restroom? The one upstairs was full. So. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. I just find it fascinating what just happened. I just said to the person sitting beside me, Kim is awesome. The way that she handles and confronts kindly but straightforwardly and the way the whole board was dealing with what looked to me where I sat with difficult things but staying on the same page and working together so I am bowled over the the only con really contention is now the, is now the term Excuse me, what did you just say? What, I think the only really contention on that table that I saw in the last hour is now the board uh, chairman. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just bowled over, over. I don't think it takes away other people's time. So if we give her a frame from clapping, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, my name is Carissa Ray. I came today after the last meeting because I think there is a lack of education on some of the books. I'm not here to attack anyone. Um, I also would like to say at this time that some of the conversation and images are not appropriate for children. So if anyone's on Zoom, please refrain from having children in the room. I have to go. Oh. I would also like to say that the petitioners in no way are trying to attack people. They're trying to do what we feel is best for our community and our children. And these are some of the images in one of the books. These are some more. You can look at them. I don't mean to expose anybody, but I feel like if this is something we're having in a public library, it should be shown. I don't know if our board members have seen them, but I do believe they should be seen. If you're going to be on the board, you should know about that. Yeah, is it what's the title? Yes, it is gender queer uh, a memoir. And then I have a few things I would like to say upon showing these images um, about porn and the early exposure to children and the sexualization of children and how it affects them. To help others understand the gravity of allowing young people and children to see these pornographic images, I pulled information. Um, the Harvard International Review states sexualization as defined by the American Psychological Association is an inappropriate imposition of sexuality through objectification, overvaluing, or emphasizing appearance and or sexual behavior, regardless of the presence of physical sexual assault. 
As a Harvard study notes, early sexualization can be directed or indirect for a child. Any viewing of porn is an inappropriate imposition of sexuality. That is coming from Harvard, a Harvard study. Porn distorts young people's view of sexuality for boys and negative impacts how they view women who are seen mainly as sex objects rather than multifaceted human beings, but it can be equally harmful to girls, negatively impacting their self-esteem, causing them to see themselves as sexual objects, leading them to accept abusive behaviors, including rape as normal. Porn leads to early sexual activity and more lifetime sexual partners for both boys and girls, which can increase the risk of teen pregnancy, abortion, and sexually transmitted diseases. Porn destroys destroy relationships. Sorry. Uh, a report showing 20,000 adults who were studied who watched X-rated films were more likely to report being unhappy in their marriages, have extramarital affairs, and be divorced. Early porn exposure increases the risk of porn addiction. Ma'am, yes, I'm sorry, but we would love if you want to bring that up. I we would love to read it. Thank you. Anyone else? Three minutes. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple comments. Um, the library staff in the director's report, it seems like they feel that they're accused of promoting an ideological agenda. And as far as I'm concerned, on social media, at least on Instagram, they are promoting an ideological social agenda through the county library social media pages. These claims are not unfounded, at least not on the Instagram site. I would ask the board to review the example of the Instagram accounts that were submitted to them at the May 2023 board meeting. You can see what the Instagram accounts look like. You can look through that and see if that is promoting, in fact, an ideological agenda. As the county library uses county taxpayer dollars, I believe taxpayers have a say in how their county spend those dollars. And after seeing the library social media accounts specifically, many have concerns and they are valid concerns. If the library staff does not currently feel supported in their work, perhaps it is because parents, grandparents, taxpayers, and other community members do not agree with this agenda being promoted by our county library with our county taxpayer dollars. In regards to the petition, the county's board of trustees, or I'm sorry, to, in regard to our petition to our county library board of trustees, the writers and signers are simply exercising their First Amendment right to petition the request to the board should they choose to adopt any new policies in light of promoting ideological agendas as the county library, especially ideological, ideological agendas that many parents, grandparents, taxpayers, and community members view as harmful to our youth. We have also asked any books or media containing sexually explicit or pornographic material, such as what was just being passed around, be removed from the child and adolescent sections of the library, as both sections are intended for readers under the age of 18. This type of protection is afforded by United States laws regarding pornography and pornographic materials. We've also asked repeatedly that books be labeled for their content. Books are already labeled for genres. You have adults, you have nonfiction, you have young adult fiction. If this labeling of books is considered censorship, as I have heard in the last couple of meetings, how are librarians able to label books with cat or dog or holiday labels? and that is not considered censorship. We want to support our library staff. We are simply asking or petitioning our board to have a say that we have a say in how policies are drafted. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So have you filled out this um, form? For Nancy, can you please address the board? Um, I just wanted to know how many of these forms for reconsideration of, of library materials. We actually have a few three forms um, that we're looking what at now. Have, what is the name of the book that you're taking here? Gender Queer. Yeah. Do you have one for that? No, I mean, our, we are working on that policy right now. 
I can show you in the policies that we have. Three. Yeah, it should be because yeah, it's probably your thing. Citizen request. We have three right here, which will be which will, will be adopted. Yeah, adopted. Absolutely, it's a great form. Oh, you want the form? You want the form? There you go. Okay. Do we have three of them that we were given for to look at? Okay. Okay. Um. So every book that they want labeled should be should have one of these requests to come to the board. Um, and, and the other thing that I have to say is, I thought it wasn't a petition, but it was just a group of concerned citizens expressing themselves. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one question to the board. Am I allowed to bring an attorney to? Meetings. That's a great question. The public meeting. Yeah, it's a public meeting. Yeah. 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 You can, can bring there. anybody you want. Okay. okay. Even if it's a federal judge, are we allowed to do it? Yeah, it's a public meeting. I just need to get the and make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. The federal waters, are we allowed to have? Yes, we'll answer. Jim, I we would have to check on that. Mm -hmm. I can't give you, you know, I'm trying right now to look it up in at half quick. If you can't find it right now, can you respond back? I'll respond back to you when I'm able to find it. I don't know how long that could be. Yes. Thank you. My name is. Um, Linda Pinky, and I have a daughter that is almost 22 or is she? Anyway, not one time in her life did I show her a picture of anybody doing any kind of sexual relationship. Not one. That's my choice. It is not the library's choice to have it sit on an open shelf somewhere where they can go have it. I was up there earlier today. I noticed that there's a beautiful art storybook all the way around the room, all the way around it. There's one child in it dressed in a white shirt and blue jeans. There's not one picture like that one right there, up there on that wall. Why is that down here and not up there? There's a nude woman in there. There's not anything up there saying anything about sexuality or the other communities. I don't want to offend anybody in that matter, but why, why is it so hard to say these books have to be on these shelves when somebody can't stand there and watch what child is going to be pulling that book out. Why is it that that can't be taught at home and instead of on our shelves at the library? At the last meeting that I attended, um, I, I guess I was the object of being called a Christian fascist. And um, I was also um, heard the quotes of Hitler. I think that was meant to, to indicate that perhaps I was like Hitler. Not sure what that really was, but when I just now tried to pass information that Carissa had presented with these pictures from these books behind me no 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 and I said well then take them to show your grandchildren if you're and and you said I was harassing I, I'm not exactly sure you address that, where that came I know I'm just it's just odd how people in the talking of last month's meeting were allowed to say whatever they cared to say and um, there was no 
stopping it by the chair. There was no um, rebuttal from the board at all to say um, this will be a you know a meeting of protocol. And yet, when the two ladies got stood to speak about the petition that they'd had signed, there were accusations that some of the signers were um, child abusers. Uh, some had signed under duress. I'm not sure how you can say those things when you don't have facts to back that. And not once in their presentations did they say, we want these books banned from the Shelter County Library. All they stated was that they did not want them in the children's section. They did not want to say that, how could anybody ever think that they would have these books in our library? Not once. But yet the immediate response was, well, here's the Bible. This should be, you know, th there are sections in a library that are just as she said, adult, biography, romance, maybe even. Would it be so difficult to make a decision that this type of a book would not be within access of a small of a young child's reach? Or that the librarian would have the, the authority to say no, um, that that particular book will have you'll have to have parental consent. I find that just an easy decision to make as a board. And the decision about the cat. If you find that the cat is causing people ill health, wouldn't you say that it makes most sense then not to have the cat? I just find that these things that you're talking about take a lot of time away from what you could be doing. But then I sat on a school board for 15 years and we didn't really want to talk about things too much. We wanted to get to the meat of it. I want you to get to the meat of it. Thank you. I actually have a definition out of the Wikipedia. A petition is a request to do something, most commonly addressed to a government official, but it can be addressed to the public entity. They are in the form of supplication. It's a document addressed and signed by numerous individuals, but the petition may be oral rather than written or may be transmitted via the internet. I hope that Wikipedia is sufficient for you. I would just like to note that um, while we were here for the entire meeting and a good share of that was a report by uh, the director of the library, she chose not to be here to hear what we had to say. Um, I have had children in the library. I was a child in the library. I went in with my children to see what was being done. I agree with putting maybe putting books up, but there's a point of you can't take everything away you don't approve of. Just don't look at it. Don't let your kids look at it. I mean, there's a certain amount of stuff you have control over. So I don't, I don't get this having to have to take this all apart and try and make it something else. Why Emily left is because of the things that have been told to her, the things that she had read off at the earlier that she had read off. I wouldn't want to sit there either. I mean, there's a point of understanding and talking like regular people. There's not an understanding name calling, making her sick over the fact the thing she's been accused of. So that's where I stand. Uh, my, my name is Rich Dusterson and I'm from Big Sandy. And uh, I uh, want to note the, the petition and there's nothing magical about that word, just call it what it is, petition. It still doesn't force the board to do anything. The board reserves the right to accept it, reject it, table it, do whatever they want with it. But it's a petition uh, simply asks for parental uh, 
authority to in, in order for children to take certain kinds of books out of the library so that it makes sure that parents are cognizant and aware of what their children are doing. It doesn't take away from the parents, doesn't take away from the library. It just uh, mandates a certain level of parental discretion. Uh, I feel badly for uh, Emily uh, having the health concerns that she did. I know that I never said anything lying about her. Uh, she used the word lies quite a lot. And then the lawyer that she contacted uh, also used that word quite a bit and somewhat inappropriately too, because some of the things that were categorized as lies were simply differences of opinion about what does it mean to sexualize children? Uh, what does it mean to objectify children? What does it mean to expose children to uh, certain kinds of literature? That's just a difference of opinion. That's not necessarily a lie. We can have differences of opinion about that kind of stuff without resorting to legal intimidations. And that's what I consider that. I, I think that's very unfortunate that she felt uh, the need to, uh, you know, put a letter in front of the board here that threatens uh, you know, some kind of legal sanction against the library for people in the community wanting to express its opinion, their opinion. I thought that was manipulative and unfortunate. Yes. Wendy Cowns, I guess I agree that I think it's parental discretion, but I think it's a parent's responsibility to accompany their children to the library. The five-year-olds and 12-year-olds aren't driving themselves to the library. The parents should be coming with them. And yes, look at the book your child wants to take out. Don't make the librarian the person who has to make your decision for you. The parent should be making that decision. You have the right to come to the library, look at that book, and if you don't like it, then don't let your child check it out. My name is Judy Ertha. I'm from Big Sandy, and I completely agree with that statement. I think that their parents should have that right, and I come to the library with my three kids, but the problem is that a lot of these graphic novels, they don't blurt out pornography inside. Even if you do a quick search, you might not be able to see it. So that's why the petition was asking for clear labeling. So that means a parent, when I go in and, oh, let's get that one. Oh, okay, you can get this, 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 this. And it makes it just easier. It just makes it clear, a clear, concise choice for kids, for parents, for everyone. And if it's, again, if it's that graphic, it, it's, it just shouldn't be there. It is obviously adult content in movies, in video games. There's already a policy for the internet. So it just makes it sort of like a big question mark. Why is it okay in this facet, but not in everything else? Um, so yeah, I agree. I, I would love to come into the library and very quickly be able to make those decisions. And as I mentioned in my last comment, in the um, I'm going to say catalog, it, every book has those features. Um, like it says, you know, if it contains anything with sexual orientation or sex or any sexual acts are on there. So just as holidays again are labeled right behind you very clearly, it would be so great, and it, it just be a great tool for us as parents as well when we're choosing our books to have that. So, thank you. I, 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 Bill Wood, I guess my question is, Kim, are you still on the board? Yes, I'm just not chairperson. Okay. And how long can people be on the board? Is there a drop in You could probably, yeah, it's a uh, it's five, it's year term. Term. five year term. Five year term. I'm on until 2024, although members can be voted to be removed. Um, chairperson is one year. Okay. Um, and at five years, are you gone or can you be elected to another term? Twice. Okay, that's it, right? You're right. Mm -hmm. I misspoke. 
Mm -hmm. I know I'm in my second term. So at 2026, I will be done. I'll have two terms in. Sorry, there's also a foundation that I just want to get done within 2024. Are you, are you interested in running? Oh, yeah. I right. already put a letter in with the uh, uh, county commissioners uh, last year, but nothing ever came up. And uh, it was and a letter from the year before. Been, and last year. Yes. And uh, we're all stakers. So, yeah, I. I heard that one of you hates my guts, so yeah. I'm here to it by now. Thank you, Bill. I I would like to tell you that I, as a person on this board, is very affected by this also. It has not been a pretty time. And no, I don't sleep either. Okay? And I have problems. And I do spend most of my time trying to look up information. I don't see anyone else, but I devote my time. Yesterday morning, I started at 4 a.m. Apparently, Kim said that we can and her thing that that we can address the board. Well, my thought was after we adjourn the meeting. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're the difference. Yeah, you're the chairperson. But you can also adjourn it. We only adjourn this meeting. You need a motion. You need a motion. Can you call a motion? I call a motion. I call the motion. Make a motion. I second. Use I. I can you go reach my out soon, Thank you so much for running for the Yeah, awesome. Hopefully, one of us will be joining. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it.